Hello, this is Tim Catalano again, and today I'm going to go over the path feature in the advanced array. Let's go add some objects in here. Got a couple of paths here. So let's go add an advanced array here. I'm just going to leave it set to one. We'll come back to some of this other stuff in a second. Let's go to the path here. Pick a path and pick this guy. So first off, you, you'll you'll be defining spacing when you have some objects in there. So I'm just going to add an object in there. Your default spacing is by world space coordinates. Let's add two items in there so you can see that it stretches out like a normal array, only just follows along. It's as if you're having a an X dimension, but it's going right along a path. You can also offset where it starts by using the offset here. And you can see that it loops around. Let me turn that on and off and you can see what happens. So if you have loop off, it just continues down the trajectory of the last point on the, on the path. Turn it back on. Let's go back to this distances percentage. That means that we can treat the spacing as a percentage of the line. So the spacing right now is set to a quarter of the total length. We can do the offset and it'll, it'll push it that way too. I, I find that a little bit easier and it, and it makes a little bit more sense uh, here in a second when I, when we change some of the spline itself. So we'll go back to that one. You can see that turning on and off the follow path causes the items to, with it off, maintain their their original orientation. If you tell it to follow the path, then it then it changes it to following the the kind of the the vector that the path is going. Now I, I took a bunch of the code from the from the actual path uh, constraint and just made a couple of modifications. So th there is a lot of similarities here. Move to, you can be used to move your objects to the path. So you can, you can stay off the path over here and run as if it's on the path, or you can use the move to. Now there's special stipulation with, with using the move to. So let's copy this guy right here, right? I'm gonna delete this. All right, and I'm going to copy this one, and I'm going to paste it back onto this guy as an instance, right? So when you're instancing, only one object that is holding the instance can actually be used for determining the, the move to distance, right? So, and that's just an unfortunate part of, of how that the 3ds max kind of uh, stack works. Now you can get them to both hold that instance or that 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 offset by by using the world space version. So let's take it off both of these. All right? You can see that their actual origins are different, and we'll add the world space version. Now, when you have the world space version, you don't you don't see it when it's instanced, but it, it is still instanced. And so we can I'm going to turn the move out to initially off, and then I'm going to pick this guy, and you can see that they move along in sync there. But if I do the move to, now both objects are uh, on the spline, even though they have different different origins, right? And, but world space, you can move the origin anywhere, and it's it's never gonna it's never gonna come off of there. Whereas with the object space version, if you move it, you have to refresh something, and it'll pop it back over there. So, unfortunately, with these, you can't start stacking things on top of the world space ones. So that's that's the unfortunate part of that. All right, let's go back to the object space version. Just delete this guy. Uh, just gonna paste this guy back in here. So there's the move to and the loop. 
like I showed a minute ago, it continues down the trajectory. Now, if we use this circle over here as our as our path, you can see when the loop is off, every path has a start and end point, even a circle. But with the loop on, you know, it'll just keep going round and round, round and round. So depends on what you want to do. Let's move back over to this guy. So with the normalized on, let's add some more objects on here. And in fact, I'm going to change this to final transform. Distance is percentage and set it to one, right? So now, let me turn off loop. The, it'll just keep adding objects in between this spline. So if we normalize, eh, you can't really see it very well on this one. Certain splines you can see better on. So let's see if we can get this spline to, to show its true nature here. So when you have the, the final transform turned on on here, and you're using a, the distance is percentage and set to one so that it so that it fills the whole thing up when you when you modify the spline here it's going to also keep the items connected to it so if you turn this final transform off and turn that off and you just kind of push it all the way down there well now we're going to go to this line here we're going to move this guy around you can see that because the line length changes, it's going to lose its connectivity to it. All right. So you use that if you wanted to keep a consistent real world spacing in there. You should probably change the defaults here so that this one works more similarly to the way that it should work for a spline. So, all right. Do I have this thing set to normalized? Oh. Okay, let's turn off normalize. Uh, forgot to turn that off. So let's stretch this guy out. So you can see that things are kind of grouping over here. And that's because this path isn't set to, to be normalized, right? And that just has to do with how the path internally processes things. You just turn on normalized and it, it corrects that issue and keeps kind of a, a uniform spacing in between the items. So it could be useful for, you know, different situations because, you know, it looks kind of cooler that way sometimes. So uh, cache path position. Now that one's there if you need to move your spline later, you know, but you want your objects to maintain that original spline position. It's going to always keep that that spline position. You can continue to, to modify your spline and all that stuff, but wherever you you end up moving your spline or rotating it it's not going to it's not going to follow that so to get it to refollow you just turn that back off and then if you turn it back on wherever the spline is at at that moment it's going to maintain that that positioning there uh, banking and smoothing is not yet implemented and neither is this oriented surface is coming coming soon so I'm going to array this spline real quick. I have about 10 of them on there. And now I'll move it up a little bit here. So you can see that unlike with the path constraint, the, the path in the advanced array is able to use multiple segments or multiple splines within the same shape object. So you can Add as many as you want in there. Looks like a little bug here. It doesn't up. It keeps your world <laughs> units. But if you're using generic units, you won't even notice that. So, uh, but so anyways, when uh when it reaches the end of of one of these splines here, it pops over to the beginning of the, of the next spline in the shape. So you can obviously use loop. It'll continue going through those like that. So I hope this was useful for uh, understanding some of how the, the spline panel works within the advanced array. Uh, thank you for watching.